I'm Dave Mono, and I am an MGH first patient. I married beautiful wife Tanya, and she had noted that I was acting odd. And I, I didn't agree with that. And by odd, she thought that perhaps I was having a stroke or something, but my, my speech was slurred and my balance was a bit wobbly. And they asked me in Chicago and Edwards to go in and do a CAT scan. And I parked in the hourly, you know, get in there, take the CAT scan, it's a pretty quick deal. Doctors come out and I go, hey, let's get this going. And do you validate the parking? No? All right, then let's really move it together. Well, the images we found indicate you have five, they use the term like leashes, leashes, something of that ilk, that I didn't know what it meant in your brain. Tanya came up to the hospital. And she goes, what's going on? I go, I don't know. I don't know, they, they say I got something in my brain. and. I guess they want to keep me here and, and try to biopsy and take a harder look at it. My son had a football game that night. I coached the football, and um, I wasn't allowed to leave the hospital. We go on. I have a craniotomy so they could uh, pull something out of the masses. The next day, I looked like I got surgery with someone hitting me with a bat. Uh, but they said, hey, it's, it's, what we th it's, it's the worst thing you can think of. It's cancer. And, um, and I missed the game too. Now they won, so don't worry about that. Because of the nature of the lymphoma and location of it, there wasn't anything out there. The doctor at Edwards, she had an idea once they understood what it was. So this was like chemotherapy, like I'd never even heard of before. I had to do it inpatient. And the football season was going on. <laughs> You know, my life kept going on even though I was unable. And sometimes they say the disease mimics the qualities of the host. I said, well, it, it's, it's clever, it's stubborn. So all I can guess is this cancer's gotta be hilarious too. So <laughs> during the time I was in the hospital, because I, I was there for a long time, and they sit me and my, my wife Tanya down and they go, we've exhausted what we know. And my wife looked up and found studies and found hospitals, and uh, we got some calls back. Dr. Wyshevsky called, and he said, get down to see me get right away. I thought he was just closing the sale, but in reality, I have a very aggressive form of brain cancer. And he didn't know exactly how much fun time I had. The next morning, I met with the good people at the NIH, and they were impressive. Trial, study stuff now. Within four months, five months, everything has been cleared. So I went 90 days, I came back, and I brought candies for the nurses and doctors. I went and got the images, I went in, and he goes, um, Dave, you don't have five tumors. You have one tumor, and it's about the size of a duck egg. And then Dr. Shesky came up. He goes, hey, Dave, would you go to Boston? Around 2017, I had been working with and speaking with colleagues at the NIH about um, patients that we were sharing and studies that we were publishing using CAR T cells in secondary CNS. So CNS lymphoma that came from elsewhere in the body and then moved to the brain. Dr. Shesky down there, knew what Dr. Fogalt was trying to do or getting ready to do. They just needed someone that was willing to do it. We have been working for um, months now on developing this clinical trial. And it was a trial that we consider investigator initiated. So what we're doing with CAR T cells is somewhat unique. It's unlike chemotherapy. It's something that's really designed from a patient's own immune system. This arm is designed to attack my lymphoma specifically. So his cells are collected and they're re-engineered. We use viruses and technology to grow them and re-educate them and at the end of the day we get a bag of cells back that are re-infused and hopefully move from his veins into his central nervous system and in that case fight off the lymphoma in his brain. 
30 days after his cells are infused, he was in a response and things were continuing to get better. So, you know, at the end of the day, part of the trial was to show that this approach is safe, and we did. His responses were deepening, we were showing that his cells were growing inside of his body. We were able to show that it was working for him. I, I'm, I'm proud to be the first. Um, I wouldn't care if I was the millionth. I feel bad for the other 999,000 souls that have gone through this. But I want it to work. I want it to be effective. I want to make a difference in this fight. Dave knew coming in that he'd be the first patient on study. Um, I think that was part of his excitement <laughs> for doing it too. He wanted to try something novel, not only for his own benefit, but he was largely driven too by our trying to understand how and why these things may or may not work. And I hope that people can get it as a medicine of primary choice, first choice, rather than having to go through that whole first year and a half. The reason why I got involved in oncology, and particularly this field, is that while I was a graduate student, I get to see some of the first patients treated with this type of therapy. Um, and the culture of Mass General enables people to take risks for patients, to help people, to help advance science. It's a confluence of events that just only indicate a higher power, because there's no way I could hope to have this group of people. Dr. Fagalt, Dr. Spitzer up here, Dr. McAfee, Dr. Mouse at MGH, they are truly God's gift. I'm Dave Mono, and I'm the first patient to receive CAR-T treatment for CNS lymphoma at Massachusetts General Hospital.